So today we're going to talk about the new feature to BIM 360 build, which is the asset module. So when you go into BIM 360, the first thing that you want to do is to activate it. And so we're in the project admin page. We navigate to the services. And there you'll see all the modules that are available to us. And what you need to do to activate the asset module is just to click on the activate button which we've already done. Now there is more things we need to do at this level because we need to give people access. So we can go to the assets itself and if we go to firstly to permissions you'll see that if you're an admin to the project automatically you get permissions to be able to access the asset module but for everyone else that's added to the project, they'll need to be given their level of permissions that are set here and you can see you can create, you can view and create and you've got full control like all of the admins do. Then the categories themselves, now these are normally, you can create new categories at this um, level but also the categories will come in if you import the assets from a spreadsheet which I'll come to a bit later on. But yeah, to create a a new category, you just select it here, fill in the information. So, for, say, for example, we wanted some electrical equipment. That's what we can type in. Okay, and then once we've got that in, we can say add it to the standard status set, which is on the default and we can add any custom attributes to it as well but we'll say that we're not going to create a custom attribute at this level we can say save and now I click on save there we are and if we expand the others they have their custom attributes underneath it but this one doesn't okay Under custom attributes, this is where we can set up in the list of properties for the particular bits of equipment that we're going to add to the asset register. We can then create our own. So I've created a fire rating, a subcategory, and a, a status, which are all text fields as well. And to create a new one, you just say create new attribute, much like we did with what we saw with the categories themselves and you just fill that information in there and then for status sets so what you can do with the status sets so the default status set is just a series of different statuses that are given to the object so you've got specified ordered delivered installed and pre-startup there's a few others down there as well pre-functional, functional test performance posts. So there's, they're the default ones and it installed was there as well. And I've set up my own so I can go into that one and it's a pre-arrival one so we can say it's in transit, customs, with carrier and arrived. And that's just another status set and you can set them up to convey exactly the, the uh, statuses that your bit of asset is going to go through in any particular process. Okay, so that's all of the presets things we need to do. So now we can look at the asset module itself. So if we go into the module and you'll see there it is, it's the new one that's been added. We go to assets Now you can see here we've added a lot of assets and all that happened is you go to the create, you'd fill in all this criteria and that would then be added in. But of course that's a really long way of doing it and what I've done is I've gone, there's another quicker way which will allow you to import it and you can import it from an Excel spreadsheet. 
the format of the Excel spreadsheet, you download the sample um, file, which has the format within it, and then you fill in the information. And when you import that into the asset module, all of the assets are then created for you. So let's look at the template when you download it. So when you do, this is the format. So you've got the standard categories. So you've got name, category, subcategory, description, location, and it goes on with status and barcode and warranty information. Now you don't have to have all of these. You can choose not to have some of them. You can see all the optional ones that you can choose not to show. Um, but it covers all the information and with the user ones that you can add to it, you can add extra ones on the end. Um, I think with the user ones, you, they must already exist in the environment before you can add them to the spreadsheet to import them in. So an easy way to create all of this information, uh, I did it via Revit. I had a Revit model which had all of my equipment in. I extracted a equipment schedule which I exported as a Excel spreadsheet and then copied and pasted the values in. So if I switch to my, the one that I've added all the information to, you can see this is what I've done. So that the name of it was the mark within Revit. Then we've got the category. We had the subcategory, which is heating system. Got the description from there as well. And then the location. And how I got the location was in the Revit schedule, it had firstly what level it was on, it had what um, space it was in, and I used a bit of concatenation inside of Excel to, to put them all together and to give me the location. I've also put the statuses of all of them in, and then I've added extra information like all of the serial numbers, the purchase order numbers, purchase date, installation. So I've added all the fields that are, um, are necessary. Okay, and I can add more to these as well. I haven't added all of them in, but most of them are in there as well. So there it is. And so all that then happens is you go back into your project. You hit the import button. You then choose file. You pick on your Excel sheet and import it. And what it will then do is it will create automatically all these assets. Makes it nice and easy. All the information is there. And we created some user attributes and these will sit in here so you can say any user ones that we've generated they will appear in this list and that's what they're for. So with them generated to look at any of the assets that you've got if you just select them in the list so I'm going to come back to the end just to show you so I pick one of my Fankel units up it comes with all of the information within it you can see it's all been filled in and you can add more to it as well some some of the user fields that I haven't added are there listed so there are some that, that haven't been filled in so I go back into my list you will see that uh, um, I've got the list of all of the asset information if there are any issues generated from it I can create an issue so I can go create issue and we've if you looked at any of the earlier um, BIM 360 videos, you will know how all about the issues. It's the same way that you would do it in Docs or in Field. And then you can pick our object and we've got issues, we've got checklists, and we've got attachments, so you can attach a file in here. For example, you can add in a um, the PDF fact sheet, 
and it can either be on the uh, in the project itself in my documents say for example or it can be uploaded from the computer so if I've got a in my documents I've got a spec sheet save it for maybe I will say it's that one and that'll just upload the documents and attach it to it there we are there we are. and you can attach a file just by browsing and, and attaching it um, but the one that we want to look at more than anything is checklists now to add a new checklist the checklist must be added already into the field so we're just going to check to make sure that is the case so if I go back to my field management and at this level we have checklists and if we didn't have them we can import them in we can go to our templates and once we've got our imported templates so if you see the field management module that will show you how to do that we create a new checklist from the template so I can create any one of these say for example Henry and James's checklist okay now that's generated so now what will happen then if we go back to the assets you will then see that it will become an option so if we pick one of our assets fan call unit we go to checklists and we say add a checklist there's the ones that have been added so we can choose one and then say select and now that checklist we're into that checklist and we can go through the commissioning of it um, linked with that asset module and we can go through that process but we're not going to go through that just yet let's go back into the asset module so the checklist has been added and it says it's started so we've got all of the features that are in the build which are some of the key features which are also available and so that the asset itself is updated because it is linked to that feature now there are certain parts of it for example if we go back to the details like for example the um, barcode let's go and find one that doesn't have the barcode added to it that we need to do from a mobile device so I'm going to switch to the mobile device so we switch to our mobile device and now what we're going to do this is the app we're going to go to the new feature in here which is assets we can then find an asset and the one we're looking for is the let's go to the next one down FC4 you can see that there is no barcode added so I go to the, my barcode option and then I can just take my mobile device find the barcode and immediately it selects it and then it's added to the listing so that's a nice useful thing that you can do on site you can point it at the barcode and it will record it as well now from the mobile device as well we can then go to my checklist sorry in here add it in mechanical first fix and it allows me to fill in my checklist from the mobile device which is what I would do on site okay so I can say select and then I can assign it just as we did for normal to me I can pick a location say it's on the ground floor I can choose a date okay and being more specific will say that it's in reception I'm going to go create 
and so now we've got a checklist associated with it and it's ready for tomorrow and I can fill it in from here if I want to. Okay, all the options in there but if you look at the the build module which with, with the field management um, part of it that will explain how to fill in a checklist. Okay. So that is the new asset module. It is a very much awaited module and it seems to uh, um, have all of the functionality that is necessary to record your assets. And of course, at the end of the project lifecycle, all this information can be transferred over to your system, which is going to control your uh, your project or your building um, assets um, from a management point of view and so the information isn't lost. Thank you.